Welcome back to the Scrapyard, friends. I'm your host, Barnabas Tone. And this is me, your co-host, Frederick Allen Seto. And it's time for... The Fans vs. ACs Challenge. And racing today, we have Group 1. For Team Cartoons, it's the 1983 Camaro Stock Car. Driven by Mr. Antunes himself, he'll be going by the codename Wild Wheatmo. I think that was his codename in the Portuguese National Army. And again, this whole competition would not have been possible without Carlos's generous donation. And speaking of donations, we have the driver for our team. For the scrapyard, it's the 1970 Chevelle stock car. Driven by Nell One. He's the head of the scrapyard's graphics department. Oh, well, what does that have to do with donations? Well, he's an artist. You ever see what they get paid? Ah, I see. Point taken. He needs all the donations he can get. Scrapyard Diecast Racing. Here we are at the guillotine gate with our first race in round two. I am really excited for this race. We're finally going to see Cartoon's team captain, Wild Wheatmo, take the track. And hopefully, Al, you have some leftover excitement for Team Scrapyard's driver, Nell One, from our graphics department. Yeah, I'm not holding out for that guy. I mean, he's an artist. The best he can do is deliver a draw. Huh? <laughs> Get it? A draw? Because art is a draw, a tie is a draw? What would this channel be without my jokes, Barry? A lot better. Three, two... One, go! What a lot! What? He crashed! Wild Weepo recovers! Wild Weepo all alone and across the line! What a comeback! Let's break it all down in the replay! Well, Barry, let's break it down. They come out of the guillotine starting gate pretty straight. Seems like these cars are pretty evenly matched. That's right, Al. But then Nell One muscles in hard for the block and sends Wild Weepmo right into the edge of the transition dividers for the bottleneck. Right, Barry. And truth be told, that is a brutal block. Probably the most brutal in scrapyard history. I mean, I haven't named a move after someone since the Maverick during the Then vs. Now challenge, but this block is up there. But as brutal as it was, Wild Weepmo didn't give up. He restarted his engine and got back in the race. Right, but by that time, Nell One easily had a 1500 feet advantage. And to all our international viewers, I apologize. I do not know the metric system, but I'm guessing that's like five kilometers. Not even close, Al. Whatever, who cares? After one of the best executed blocks ever, plus a massive lead, Nell One loses it on a curve and crashes while all alone. Who on the scrapyard team does this guy think he's helping driving like this? I'll tell you who. Me. That's who he's helping. I don't even have to warm up the yellow jacket if he's gonna deliver his wrecks right to my front porch. Although after smacking into the fire truck the way he did, I bet you the chief might have some words for him that don't sound too full of that team spirit. More importantly, look at the way Wild Weepmo passes Nell One a mere inches from his car, almost mockingly as a payback for that block. He takes Carmine Corner like a champ. Right, and then he centers up and teaches Nell One what you're supposed to do when you have a massive lead. And that's dominate. Even from the alternate cameras, you can see what a textbook finish looks like. It's easy to see how the whole racing team is named after this guy. Great job, Team Cartoons. Well, with that win, Cartoons Team Captain has put the first win on the scorecard. Yeah, maybe he should change his name from Wild Wheatmo to Winning Wheatmo. Scrapyard Diecast Racing. Here we are at the guillotine for the start of Heat 2. Team Captain Wild Weepmo must be riding high after that big win. Yeah, and let's hope Heat 1 was a very rough sketch for our artist friend, and he could bring his final draft game for this heat. Another loss for Nell 1, and it would end his race right here. Yeah, and it would be one less overall driver for Team Scrapyard. Three, two, one, go! No one leads. They connect. Into the corner. Wait, what? He 
blew it again! What's wrong with this guy? Calm down, Al. We'll see what went wrong in that replay. Look at this, Barry. No one actually has the lead coming out of the guillotine gate. Yes, Al, but then Wild Wheatmo must have had a hidden bottle of nitrous in that Camaro because once he enters the bottleneck, he actually accelerates so hard he pops a wheelie. He does it so forcefully, he looks like one of Wild Bob's angry stallions. <laughs> Yee-haw! Maybe he should change his name to Wild West Wheatmo! But even with all that nitrous, Nell One is still able to hold on to the lead and understeer his way through Carmine Corner. And while desperately trying to catch up, Wild Weepmo lives up to the wild part of his name by loudly slamming into the clunkers and the rubber tires in Clunker Canyon. Right, and that noise must have startled our sensitive artist friend because he blows the lead again. What the heck? This guy sucks! First he blew his chance at a win, and now he just blew his chance to tie it up. Wild Wheatmo hit the clunkers and was on his way to the wall. What, he knows how to push a pencil, but he can't push a brake pedal? This Nell One needs to literally go back to the drawing board and leave the driving to the pros. Calm down, Al. No, the final straight is the widest part of the scrapyard track. It's five clunkers wide. I mean, now I know why artists need rulers. They can't keep it straight without one. Well, let's see how all this affects the scorecard. We're losing. That's how it affects the scorecard. Oh, shush. Well, since neither racer was able to cross the line, it's a double DNF and no one gets the win. Scrapyard Diecast Racing. Heat 3. Team Captain Wild Wheatmo needs a win or a double DNF to secure his place into the next round. Yeah, and Nell One needs a miracle. By the looks of things, the only way that guy is getting a trophy is if he photoshops one into his hand. Good luck to both teams and both racers. Let's hope they keep it safe out there. Three, two, one, go! Nell One leads! They're spinning! They're both in reverse. Our guy gets loose. No one wins. Whoa, he took out a safety tree. Do we have a gardener in the safety crew? Nope. But the boys are already out there to give that wheat mow a tow back up to the guillotine. And here we see how Nell One was able to get the jump out of the guillotine and maintain a strong lead into the bottleneck. Right, Barry. But once they get in there, Wild Wheatmo hits the nitrous again and does a wheelie block. That also might be a first in scrapyard history. Man, these guys are really trying to get a move named after them. But while successful, that block sends them both into a wild spin. And they struggle their way through Carmine Corner, and in a dazzling display of driving, they both come out of that corner in reverse. And again, without his ruler, Nell One cannot keep it straight. I mean, look at this. He gets loose in Clunker Canyon, then uses one of the rubber tires to try and straighten out. But it doesn't end there. Then he uses the soft barrier, the metal barrier, all the safety rocks, and uproots the safety tree. I'd say he did that on purpose to fall on Wild Wheatmo's car, but this guy can't drive forward to save his life or our team. So there's no way he was able to pull that off purposely in reverse. Well, that tree did come down hard on Wheatmo's window. And luckily, he was able to get towed back up to the guillotine, and that's a good thing because... With that win, Nell One was able to tie up this race at the last possible moment. And that means this race will now go into... Here we are back at the guillotine gate for the start of Sudden Death. Yeah, while I love Sudden Death, I never, ever, ever thought we'd be here. How that graphics guy has been able to stumble his way this far is beyond me. Keep in mind he is on our team, Al. He's been doing fine. He only had a minor brush with defeat. Haha, <laughs> get it? Brush. Because he's an artist. Oh no. Bad enough I gotta worry about a cartoonist trying to become a race car driver. Don't you go trying to switch from commentating to doing a poor job at comedy. That's up to me. You're right, Al. No one does a poorer job at comedy than you. Hey, that's not what I meant. Three, 
two, one, go! A massive block! Weevo hits hard! Melwan opens it up! Weepo can't recover! It's all over for Weepo! And now one wins the heat and the race! I knew he could do it! What a driver! He really is an artist behind the wheel! Again, no one blocks while Weepo into the transition guardrail. And this block makes the one from Heat 1 seem like a love tap, while Weepo has to work frantically at the wheel to keep from flipping over. And as hard as he fights, he can't recover. I kept saying, these two guys were aiming to have a move named after them. And my good old buddy, the amazing artist, Nell One, pulled it off. And since he's such a great artist of blocks, I'm going to name his move after another great artist famous for painting blocks. This move will now and forever be called... The Picasso. Um, Picasso is famous for cubism, not blocks. Blocks, cubes, tomato, tomato, it's all three-dimensional squares. Barry, the block is called the Picasso, and that's that. Okay, Picasso it is. And let's take a look at the receiver of the Picasso. He seems to have had his bell rung so bad he was never able to recover and crashes into the exit of the bottleneck. I don't know, Barry. That's not how I see it. Remember, Wild Weepo is Team Captain. Heck, the whole team is named after him. Go back and watch this event's pre-show if you don't know what I'm talking about. But anyway, he's proved that he was able to recover from the Picasso in Heat 1. He's crafty and smart. In the very first race of this event, I joked how Carmine Corner was haunted. Well, I don't know if it is haunted, but it has claimed the lives of Weepmo's father, Carmine, his racing coach, Sir Adrian O, and Weepmo's mysterious She-Wolf. Wow! So I think he was playing it smart and just decided to leave well enough alone and call it quits before he became victim number four. Again. Mr. Crane and the owners and investors of the scrapyard would like to reiterate that to the best of their knowledge, these racers are not dead and they are merely off track. Well, I'll tell you who was on track. My main man, Nell One. Look at the way he's so straight. Dead center down Clunker Canyon and into the final straight. It's like he's on rails. I mean, laser beam straight. Can this guy drive or what? Like I've said all along, he is the man. Watch out, sports coat, because Team Scrapyard might have a new MVP. Al, I have to admit, you may not always be right, but your commentary is always fair. Weathered friend. Thanks. Hey, wait, what was that you just said? I said, let's see whether that affects the scorecard, my friend. <laughs> With that performance, Nil One gets a block named in his honor. Kind of. But more importantly, he not only wins sudden death, but he wins the race. And he becomes the first racer in this event to lock his place in the semifinals. And while Wild Weepo is out, he puts on an impressive display of driving. And now he can focus solely on being team captain. And I'm sure he's happy to be able to concentrate on that job because in the next race, his daughter will be making her Scrapyard debut as the youngest racer in Scrapyard history. That's right, it'll be Sassy V in the Ferrari F50 for Team Cartoons facing our big rig driver, Mean Nino Eddie, in the Bentley for Team Scrapyard. Until then, this is Barnabas Tone saying thank you and good night. And I'm Frederick Allen Seto saying thanks for watching and I hope you'll join us again back here at the Scrapyard. But until then, thank you all for watching. If you haven't done so, give us a like. And please subscribe to the Scrapyard so you never miss a race. And follow us on Instagram and Facebook for even more Scrapyard diecast racing action. So, so please, please join, join us, us next, next time for the next installment, installment of...